You're watching Newsday TV. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ken Bufa. Listen, a student brought a BB gun to Levittown School today. The principal of Division Avenue High School says classes were held in place because of it. Now, police were called to the school to investigate. There's no word yet on the student and if they're facing any charges. Now, school bus caught fire this morning. Here's photos of first responders at the scene. Fire officials say it happened in Westbury on Stewart Ave. There were no children on board and the driver was not hurt, thankfully. There's also no word on what started the flames. And the Nassau University Medical Center is bleeding money, but that did not stop its ousted president from getting a big payout when he left. This is a story you'll see only in Newsday. Dr. Anthony Bootin is being given $650,000 for his accrued time off. He was also allowed to keep his work SUV worth about 70 grand. He's also entitled to get this lifetime health benefits. Politics reporter Scott Eiler got a hold of the separation agreement and has the details. NUMC is bleeding cash right now. I think there will be some people who see a cognitive dissonance here where the hospital is uh, giving a car valued possibly at around $70,000. They are uh, giving a $650,000 check to its former CEO that it ousted. They might wonder why it has to do that. But it's very complicated. It has to do with laws that were written a number of years ago and policies that uh, employees are legally entitled to. But there has been a lot of scrutiny on the way Nassau University Medical Center has handled its finances. Now, auditors say the hospital could run out of money later this month and a proposed extended stay hotel in Melville has won more than $10 million in tax breaks. The Fern Cliff would have nearly 300 units on Spagnoli Road. It would include hardwood floors, full size appliances, a bar and a restaurant. The developers are targeting a summer 2027 opening. And migrants living in the woods in the Hamptons are facing an uncertain future. Jasmine Anderson continues our special series, The Migrant Struggle. Living in the woods, a last resort for some migrants living on the East End. Newsday TV visited two encampments in the town of Southampton. These hidden communities have become a place of refuge and oftentimes the only option for many due to shelter restrictions on Long Island. Mike Jafrida with the Ally Coalition for the Homeless explains why. Single adults that are not U.S. citizens and do not have a social security number on Long Island are not eligible for any year-round shelter. The organization's street outreach team works to find housing solutions for all people, regardless of their status. Long Island is very big. Um, there's a lot of wooded areas. It's not so easy to find people. We'll get calls saying that, you know, they can see people in tents. Southampton Police Sergeant Gina LaFerrera says officers don't forcibly remove anyone unless they're on private or town property, or if the temperature drops. We don't want to see anybody out there in, in the freezing cold because we obviously don't want anyone you know, ill. But these encounters are often met with hesitation. A lot of times they have their encampments set up. They don't want to leave their stuff behind, so they'll stay. Although living in different encampments, the men face the same fear of losing the community they've created. Jafrida says encampment sweeps can make things more difficult for the people who are trying to help. The street outreach workers and others who were involved in the community trying to help that person, they lose that trust. In fact, in many ways, it prolongs homelessness because people could lose their belongings, things like ID, which are required to access housing and services. Outreach workers could no longer be able to find that person to continue to follow up with them and work on housing. There's a plan to build affordable housing where one of the encampments is located. Newsday reporter Brianne Letta has been looking into this. What did you find? Yeah, so this has been going on since around 2017. A nonprofit wants to build 50 units of affordable housing where the camp currently is. Um, about half of those units will be set aside for homeless veterans. And they actually are still waiting on a zone change approval from the Southampton Town Board before the application can move forward. And while decisions are still in the works, what is for certain those living in the encampments would be displaced? The more time that we have to be honest with people and meet them where they're at, the more success we have in relocating people in a way that they still trust us. 
Jasmine Anderson, Newsday TV. You can read more about our special series, The Migrant Struggle, at Newsday.com. Click Get More or the Newsday TV video box. Two English rock bands are embarking on a North American tour. You know the song, Deep Purple, and yes, we'll play together at Jones Beach on September 1st. Tickets for the One More Time Tour go on sale this Friday. Challenges and charm are mixing in Long Island's smallest school districts. Sherry Einhorn has a story you'll see only in Newsday. Long Island has more than 120 different school districts, most of them medium to large with several thousand students. You may be surprised to learn, though, things on the East End are very, very different. How many more thirds is that to get to two more days? Welcome to the Wainscott School. The district is small, really small compared to most others. 84 kids total, 24 in this school, which is kindergarten through fourth grade. You know everybody in the school. Not just in your class, you know yeah, yeah, you'll the know entire every school. They share classrooms and teachers. 13, 14. While a teacher is working with students in one grade, the others are learning independently. It's described as cozy, homey, and unique. The older students become teachers, role models, mentors, and it's really important on, for the older students. And the younger students absolutely love it. All students have lunch and recess together, and employees here wear multiple hats. We're very streamlined administratively. Most of the people that work here, other than the teachers, are all part-time, including our superintendent, our business manager. Now, the Wayne Scott School isn't the only one here on the East End set up like this. What do you say? Second grade teacher Dana Andrioli has an all around perspective on the small school setting. She was a student here at the Remsenburg Spionk Elementary School. So were her kids and now she's a teacher. You really have the time to get to know each student individually, their parents. The district dates back to 1813 and has 125 students in grades K through six. I like how everybody kind of knows each other and like we get to do fun things with the whole school. Students here and in other small districts choose one of the larger surrounding districts to attend when they go to the higher grades and their home district pays the tuition wherever they go. It's tricky because with our budget, more than half of it goes to tuition. So if I need to make cuts, I can't make cuts there. I can only make cuts in my K-6 budget. <laughs> It's a delicate balancing act, she says, similar to the harmony of notes played by this marimba band. In Remsenburg, I'm Shari Einhorn for Newsday TV. Now to read more about micro districts, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More for the Newsday TV video box. Now let's take a look at your mostly wet Long Island weather. All right, so for tonight, we're going to stay dry. We're going to hit 45 degrees, but tomorrow, here comes the rain. So tomorrow, yes, of course, we do have rain, and it's going to stick around pretty much all day. And it looks like it's going to start, though, near noon. But for the rest of the week, it's kind of a mixed bag. We have rain for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. As of right now, it looks dry, so I'll take it. Long Island weather is brought to you by Fire Island Ferries. You're watching Newsday TV. I'm Ken Bufa. Thank you so much for joining us.